Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find all of our content on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. I am Ron Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And today our serial guest is none other than the one and only Matthias von Gutenberg, otherwise known as MVG. Hey guys, how are you guys doing tonight? How's it going, Matthias? Pretty good. Yeah, I know you're good. We're not. Not at all. Yeah, you guys have been having a hard time of it, right? Well, that's voluntarily, right? <laughs> so, you, well, anyways, we've been on a, uh, a THC cleanse. And this is day six. Yeah. Right? Because the last, last episode. Last episode, we were smoking our last bowl on air. Yeah. Um, why are you doing it, Rob? I spend too much money on pot. And, the economical reason. And it's, it's economics. And I don't get to, it's to the point where I have to smoke so much just to feel something. I remember back in the day when I started smoking, like one hit, I'm like, oh my God, I'm on cloud nine. And now, now it's just like I'm dropping too much money. Bowls on bowls, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's been a wild journey. It looks like it's stressing you out. I mean, you've you got some kind of like Tom Hanks castaway look going on. Like you've just been like <laughs> shipwrecked and you're just like struggling to keep it together. Yeah. Oh, am I that bad? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, no. All right. All right. Uh, no, it's um, basically. Uh, just cleansing my body, getting you know, trying to reset it back to ground zero. But I have had, right. like, I've had some side effects, kind of going through it. Like I don't have, um, I don't have any kind of, uh, you know, migraines or something like that. Because you know, I'm pro coffee. I'm, I'm always drinking coffee. I got my coffee right here. And for the show, you know, I got, I got my, uh, my I got a pot leaf coffee mug. I mean, oh, there is no pot clearly, in it. Clearly you are more pro coffee than you are more pro, than you are pro pot. Oh my god, let me tell you something. They they can they can take my pot. But I tell you right now, they take my they take my <laughs> coffee like They take your dunks. They take my dunks, they take my <laughs> coffee. Um I will become a drug dealer. I will like, you know, I will revolt against the state. Caffeine used when, to be illegal, when, right? Baltimore ain't nothing if they took my coffee. <laughs> I tell you that right now. <laughs> when coffee is outlawed, only outlaws will serve coffee. <laughs> Oh, we need a T-shirt that says that. That'd be great. Ah, uh, right. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, you know, I don't have any migraines or anything like that. I I feel like I have a hundred percent clarity in my mind. It's just I don't know. I've had like my body just is, feels sore. Mm. And it's before I, I have started working out in the last few days. But before, even before that, like the few days after, just I, my my joints feel sore. I just I don't. I don't know. Like, I, I don't feel like a hundred percent. It's been so rough. Okay. So back, um, I don't know if I've ever told you this story, Mateus, but back in October of 2013, I got a really bad car wreck and I went to this chiropractor for a while and he told me like, I was having a lot of pain in my, like my legs and my back. Right. And he was saying you, some of this pain you can have, like it can come back for the rest of your life. It's, it's that bad. And since then I've been high, like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. I've been smoking weed on the regular. Like a lot, a lot. You're, you're, you're fucking Shire dude. Right. Yeah. I've, been, I've been in full Shire dude mode. And uh, since I stopped smoking like day like three or four, I started feeling the, the pain coming back in my legs and my back, mm. especially after like going to work that like really aggravated it. And then um, somebody told me that was withdrawal. I don't think so. Um, I did. I have gotten irritable a little bit. Like I, uh, sure, yeah. I'll chalk that up to withdrawal. But um, the, the pain is, is pretty ridiculous. And I've gotten like swelling in my joints too, which really freaked me out because I've never had that before. Welcome to my world. Yeah. It's... Like I get swelling. I get, uh, I always, you know, I have swelling in my right leg all the time. For the listeners at home, if I haven't <laughs> talked about this on, on air before, uh, you see, I'm a recovering fat guy. I haven't yet recovered. And I have like crazy health issues in my leg and I always have like swelling. And a pot actually really helps like the, the, the alleviate that swelling in my leg and it's been a little bit worse the last uh, few days than normal no nope. for sure granted um my memory i guess has been better although uh, to be fair i have been also taking i've been taking ginkgo biloba lately i like taking that stuff because it like enhances your memory it's, it's supposed to be for like old people but i take it too you can buy it in any any drugstore it's <laughs> wait, just like wait, what uh, is it ginkgo biloba yeah ginkgo biloba. it's an herb it's a uh yeah it works Chinese herb, or I'm not sure. But. I'm not sure. It works really well. I used to get it at Robex, the smoothie place. Huh. Um, you were able to put ginkgo biloba in your smoothie, and that's how I discovered it. Because it's like, oh, this will boost your intelligence. And I'm like, okay, sure, give me some of that. And I started remembering stuff. You start remembering stuff from like your childhood. You have like really great conversations on that stuff. Wow. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I like taking random like herbal stuff just to kind of see how it functions and works. And 
you know. How long have you been taking it now? Um, exactly. Well, or regularly. Regularly, I've been taking it since I got off cannabis, just oh. to kind of like see, you know, like what I can do with that. Because my memory is already terrible, like as is. I'm curious, what kinds, what kinds of herbs have you had shamanistic experiences on? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I've I've taken all the all the fun drugs, but I've all you know, ginkgo biloba. I really like. I also really like um, L-theanine, which you can get. There's a line of drinks called Neuro Drinks, and there's one called yeah. Neuro Bliss. Yep, yep, yep. That contains L-theanine. You can also get it in a pill form, in a dissolving pill form as well. Those are good drinks. Yeah, they're great. They they taste good, and uh, you get a good dose of L-theanine, which like mellows you out. Doesn't really make you tired, unless you're already tired. Like then you probably go to sleep. But uh, it, it, it's got the kind of, it's similar to cannabis in that it just kind of mellows you out. It's like, I like to describe it as when you have just the right amount of caffeine that you don't get the jitters, but you're like alert and you're like, you're there and you're like at that golden point, you know? Yeah, I, I can, I, I should probably try that. We need more designer drugs. Yeah, I, you know I what? Know. I, I always love the, the idea of the movie Limitless where you can take a pill and like everything is just clarity yeah. beyond belief. Definitely. Yeah, if they... Uh, that's yep. something I would love to get on at one point. But that yeah, doesn't well. exist in real life. So. Oh, no, but that'll be available during your lifetime. Oh, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll live long enough to get that pill. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that pill will be mine. Yeah, it <laughs> will be. You know, um, but yeah, I'll live long enough to get to that point. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't really mention, too, uh, the whole reason that I'm doing the THC cleanse, which I'm doing it for two weeks, um, because I've heard that after two weeks, that uh, pretty much resets your tolerance. So I think we uh, should, we have to hold true for yeah. one more week. Yeah. We got one more week of this. Mm -hmm. All right. But after that week, we, we'll, we'll, we'll hold the bowl or the bong or whatnot for next week. Should we smoke on the next show? Is that yes, what we're going to do? That, we have, that'd be a full two That's weeks. That's the two weeks. That'd okay. be the full two weeks. We stopped at the end of the last show. Yeah. The last show was the last time we've smoked. Okay. Uh, so you've got to yeah. smoke a celebratory bowl at the end of your yeah. next show. Now, yeah. now I want to call her out. And didn't my rogue mistress? Yeah, she's been cheating left and right, and she's yeah. listening right now. Um, and uh, she's like, ah, I can't. I, she has no willpower. She's like, if it's in front of her, and I'm MVG right here. You're, I'm a bad influence. You are a horrible influence <laughs> on her. Well, Peer yeah, pressure <laughs> goes. All, it was like yeah. you just set it down. He's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take much. It didn't take much. That's not not at all. Um, well, yeah, people come over to hang out with us, and they want to smoke. That's just like what. That's a thing that we do well, here. I can't blame them. I mean, who wouldn't want to smoke? Yeah, it's yeah. fun. It's a, this yeah. is a great room to smoke. You in. know, we're kind of we're kind of building up the uh, uh, the Rich Paul effect with people. You're building the stoner <laughs> scene here. <man>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's like you know, if you see Rich Paul, what do you expect to do? You expect to smoke with them, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. You expect to smoke with him if you see him or whatnot. If he's around, I so, would love that. Like we were talking about, like uh, like Carlos Morales. Whenever people talk to him, they want to tell him like about horrible CPS stories. But when they talk to <laughs> when they talk to Rich Paul, they want to get high. Like that's, yeah. I want to have that kind of fan base. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Like come off, come off. If you ever see us at Pork Fest, we'll smoke you out. <laughs> yeah, we'll smoke you out. And if we don't smoke you out, you smoke us out. One of the, one of the two. Yeah. But find us at Pork Fest. We're all going to be there. You see us. Pass the bowl, pass the joint, something like that. We'll smoke with you. Less than a shire year away. God, pork what, fest. Fifty two days, fifty three days, something like that. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god. Like it's it's coming up. I'm I'm so excited about it. Now the Rebel Love Show will be recording at Pork Fest. Uh, we're gonna obviously we do our live show at this time slot, so we're still gonna be there at the in the media room uh, at ten o'clock. And uh, as of right now, tentatively, we're gonna be recording on Friday at uh three because in all honesty i want to i, I want to do the friday show just as kind of like a recap right before the, the big day dance party just kind of like that way we've been there long enough to kind of soak in what it is and whatnot we'll so have we tons can, to talk about by friday talk about yeah absolutely and uh come up more on our tv class For those listening on uh, on, the cam. on the cam on uh, YouTube, oh, I'm going to turn down. Turn Can down we that move this light thing. downwards towards the table? Because that's what's causing the clipping. I just realized during turn the second. Turn it down? Yeah. Okay. And then away from us. Not towards us, away from us. Yeah. Like that way? Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't really. We need light. More, more that way. 
Which way? That way. That towards Mateus. There you go. Okay. Hey, Mateus, can Appreciate you move it. like yeah. that way just a little bit? Yeah, we're wait, getting wait, some wait. kind of crazy clipping on the green screen tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those watching the YouTube yeah. video, okay, let us. I'm just gonna throw it right out there. Uh, we're gonna talk about when we go back live on LRN. But uh, long story short, I'm throwing. We're gonna be throwing some investment into the show. Uh, the we want this to be a very visually pleasing show, and the whole clipping with the green screen, and whatnot. Like my my arm right now, this like you can see through it. I'm as, as if like uh, you know, it's as if like my parents never had sex, and I gotta go back to the uh, uh, enchantment under the sea dance and play guitar and play guitar. Yeah, that's what it looks like right now, and I don't like that. Don't get me wrong, I love that movie, but I don't want that in my show or in this show or anything like that. So we're gonna we're gonna invest in a nice computer. We're gonna get. Yeah. We're gonna level this up. It's not gonna be the same that it is right now. Um, we're we're enhancing, man. As long, as we go, it's getting, oh, yeah. getting better and better. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The yeah. show's gonna. It's gonna be. What what season is this gonna be? Like season four, <laughs> five. We're counting seasons. This will be. This will be four or five. It's like, you, it's like every ten episodes is a whole new season of Rebel yeah. Show. Yeah. Once weird. we get it. See, right now the computer that we have is totally maxed out on CPU, and it's like just barely chugging along. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Looks pretty freaky. Yeah, we're it's this is at least we're not pink anymore, so that's something. Yeah, either we're clipping or we're pink. That's kind of a weird one. If you go yeah, back to the, the previous, you episodes, are really disappearing right now. I am. I know. So <laughs> you should wear a green shirt on one episode <laughs> just to do it. Yeah, there just be a head floating in the the the, the spiral of hell. Oh, that helped, dude. That helped. Somewhat. We're pink again. Does this light need to We're be pink again? But there's not clipping. Right. Does this light need to be on? What? What? Does this light need to be on? Yeah. And is my mic on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Let okay. You? I can't really hear. You got to munch a little bit more. You can't hear your headset. Not really. I mean, I can hear the feed, and I can hear you guys, but I don't hear that. We are a. We're definitely a learning hospital. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. You're good. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I just turned up your headphone feed. Hello. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. What do you want to touch up next? <laughs> I kind of want to talk about. I want to go when we get back. I want to tell people to go uh, watch the cam. Yeah, go watch the cam. Mm -hmm. And I want to say welcome back to Rebel Love Show. And uh, before we go, you just jump in and say, "Yeah, yeah." And then after that, I want I, I want to list the stations we're on. Just oh, to sure. do it because we haven't done that in a long time, and we are actually live on IPM right now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Are you uh, looking at it or what? Are you looking at it or? Am I looking at it? Yeah. How do you know we're live on IPM? Because I talked to the owner of the station, uh, okay. Matt. Uh, I always forget how to pronounce his name. Matt uh, Canartin. Uh, he's basically stealing. <laughs> stealing. He's taking the LRN feed. Nice. So we don't have to do anything, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So we're live on two stations. Africa. LRN. FM. I want to be. I want the Cameroons to hear us again, folks. Go uh, donate. Cameroons. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show, and for those uh, listening on uh, on the radio, you can go find watch us live. And where can they find? Yeah, us? just go to shiredude.com. It's the big Rebel Love Show button on the left side of the page. Go, you can watch our beautiful faces. You know, uh, we're having some. Uh, <laughs> you don't look perfect, but uh, we, we're getting there, we're man. Getting there now. It, it, the show is definitely going to level up uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, we're purchasing new equipment, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, we're going to have a whole new PC uh, rig going where our video quality is not where we want it to be. We're going to level up this show. We're investing money into I, it. I want this show to be the most visually appealing show in the Liberty Movement. It already is. As far as live shows go. Like, you know, you can do a lot, sure, after the fact with editing and whatnot. But for a live show to really look good. Because right now, what we have, 
bunch of Google Hangout shows. Oh my god, that sucks. I, I want to go on a rant for a second about Google Hangout shows. Um, I understand their, why they exist, and they're they're cool for what they do. Um, now we're actually broadcasting live to YouTube via Google Hangouts, but at the same time, it's not a it's not a Google Hangout show. We're all we're all in the studio. same room, yeah. So like you know, I can change camera angles uh, to see Mateus, or I, like I can reach out and touch Mateus, yeah. or I can reach Please out don't. and put my hand <laughs> my hands now in two camera angles at the same time, type of thing. Um, but we're all in the same studio. Um, but the problem I have with Google Hangout shows is more of the audio than the video. Like the audio in Google Hangout shows are almost always horrible because everyone's just using like the mic that's on their like laptop, and like it's just their webcam mic. Yeah, their webcam mic, and their like their webcam mic is just like god awful. Um, and uh, yeah, I I don't know. I, I want people to have good audio, so I, I wish people would invest in some really nice microphones. And like it's weird. Like I watch. Um, I'm kind of like a tech geek, and. Uh, I don't really pay attention to too much Liberty uh, content anymore because I'm living this lifestyle and doing this. So I don't, when I have time to listen to a podcast or something like that, I, I don't really listen to much Liberty stuff anymore. Um, but I do listen to tech podcasts a lot. And one of my favorite, pod, a couple of my favorite podcasts do a live show via, they, they do live shows via Google Hangouts. And their audio is amazing. They got like all down. They're using, you know, they, they all have really professional microphones and all that jazz like like we do. I just wish more people in the livery movement would invest a few dollars to get a nice mixer and a, a nice microphone, something along uh, those lines. You know, to, to be fair, though, you have sunk a lot of money into the show. Like, yes. the, average, the average liberty activist is poor. And a lot of time into the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Don't Look, it, yeah, I, I have spent a lot of money on this. Um, Probably more than I I care to share. Yeah, I'm just trying I'm, to be. I'm just trying to be I'm fair. More money on it. To the Google Hangout shows. I'm glad you're doing something. That's true. That's true. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's just I, I just I'm, I'm not hate. I'm not trying to hate on that. I, just I have, love the fact yeah. they're putting content out. Don't get me wrong on that. Yeah. I just wish it was sounded better. That's, I just I just want to be like a hundred times better than them, so we can look down at them and say neener I, neener nonner. I want I want <laughs> this show to be video quality wise and audio quality wise like on par with like high end like high end uh like hugely popular shows that aren't liberty anything you know i want us to be on par with like profession obviously we're not a professional show because look what we talk about on right now we're so <laughs> we're so goddamn niche like you know i understand that <laughs> uh but at least at least like broadcast quality wise we're we're uh, hopefully race in the bar more right and especially on a visual perspective um, and guys rob is sinking like so much money in the show and i, I put a little money in but not really much but um you know every donation counts so uh you can donate to us at least give us some bitcoin so we can go buy a pint of beer after the show yeah something i, I would appreciate that donate to rob's bitcoin beer fund yeah because i'm not <laughs> smoking pot so i gotta get some sort of drug and sometimes coffee doesn't cut it oh man can we go back to that for a second absolutely alcohol i have been having to drink way more alcohol without pot because i don't have the crossfade effect <laughs> i have found myself drinking more than i have lately just because i'm compensating yep oh yeah sure yeah and i don't want to drink well i mean you know from my perspective it's from a, a an area of boredom it's like well i'm sitting here and my life is going but it's not as stimulating as it could be or i it's not, i'm not seeing it in the right lens that i want to be so there's beer or there's, or yeah. there's whiskey right there's alcohol and, and suddenly the lens has changed it's like oh well, i can get used to this so this is fun right. it's the same See, thing with weed too right yeah i mean but my biggest problem with drinking is i get a hangover mm. i get bad hangovers sometimes and i don't ever you know the beauty of pot is you don't you feel fine in the morning you might have cotton mouth really bad but, you know <laughs> but uh you don't have a hangover i don't feel like groggy or like i can't even get out of bed right you know and that happens if i drink too much but that never happens you know from smoking and uh, I miss that. Man, right. I can't wait for another week. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this to myself. I'm torturing myself with this. And then, and then conversely, um, I've noticed that caffeine has had much more of an effect on me because I don't have the, the marijuana as a downer. Well, that's a good thing then. Um, I, it was good until like, was, like, I didn't really think about it. And so I went to work and I had my normal amount of caffeine. I measure it pretty like, you know, like carefully. And it was like way too much. Like my heart was pounding and I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Yeah. It's kind of a yeah. dumb moment. You know? Yeah, I don't. 
Well, see, I'm, I drink so much coffee as it is. Like I'm always down. I, this is, this is my third time I've drank. No. Yeah. At least the third time today I've drunk coffee today. Hmm. Yeah. I wow. had it in the morning. No fourth. Oh my God. <laughs> morning, afternoon, uh, late, not uh, around six o'clock and now, now uh, four times. Definitely. Yeah. Pro coffee. Yeah, I am pro coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, that reminds me of the, I, I, uh, the time I guess last week. Um, I actually felt maybe you know for the for the first or, or you know a few for the first few times of my life I had felt that I had a really high blood pressure or like a high 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 like sugar high right like that my blood sugar my glucose levels hmm. were super high and I felt kind of just toxic just kind of gross but also kind of like jittery and uncomfortable just yeah. like perpetually uncomfortable just like a permanent discomfort. And you know, kind of gradually it faded. But I've got similar things when I got way too amped up on caffeine as well. It was this similar type of like I've got electricity going through me and I can't relax and it's not comfortable. Yeah, you, it's really easy to overdo coffee, especially since most people don't think about what like how many milligrams of caffeine they're drinking on the regular. Mm, yeah. S see, for me, I would do a uh, coffee hiatus, but I can I would not be able to handle the migraines and headaches. <sighs> I tried giving That's up caffeine weed, once. No? Yeah. That I would still, it would go through the weed. Like I, 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 drink, I drink buckets of coffee. Like I can't get off of it. Like yeah. it's the problem. It's the problem with drinking coffee. You drink so much caffeine, you can't. Not you have to. You could go cold turkey, which I'm not going to do. I love coffee. Why would I do that to myself? I can't do it. I work in the industry, so yeah, it's just like, impossible. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. No. I, it's bad enough when I'm work at, in the industry. Yeah. It, it's bad enough when I'm at work. I'm not getting any more specific than that, Matthias. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> a, don't get any more specific. Like in a coffee assembly line. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I put the girders near the farter. The bean picker. I can't just resist, you know, just taking the <laughs> bean every now and then. But it's weird. Like at work, sometimes <laughs> I go like four hours without a cup of coffee, and it's oh God, it's a it's a nightmare sometimes at my job where I don't have the time to actually drink. So I literally will make sure I'm drinking like a. I'll get like an extra large coffee from Dunks on my way there so that it's just sitting there for me. I think one thing I'm going to change uh, with marijuana when I go back to it is I'm going to be more careful about measuring how much I have. Like I've been getting, getting into tincture lately. And with that, it's really easy to measure. Weigh it out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, maybe my tolerance will get so high then. We'll find out after we Move to the Shire. Is it cool if in the next section? What? Yeah, is it cool in the next section if we get into the talk into that mic even during the breaks? Sorry. No worries. Is it cool if during the next section we get a little bit philosophical? Absolutely. Cool. What do you want to get philosophical about? Uh, just this this thing that I've been kind of this kick that I've been into for a bit now. The stuff that I've been watching on YouTube. These ideas is uh it's kind of like Eastern philosophies. Okay. Which wanted to like mention a little bit. Cause it's interesting. Okay. It's like taking my mind for like a weird warp. Okay. Cool, man. Let me just, before we do that. Let me, I I do want to touch on um what syndications we're on. Mm. But as soon as we do that, add then, one more. Then just jump into it. Hey, baby doll. What? Yeah, there's two of them. It's a double MVG episode. <laughs> show, show, show Mateus the, the feed. He doesn't know where he's yeah. watching. <laughs> Mateus should be a little more this way, though. Mateus, he be, moved too far. Mateus, be exactly where that mic is. Yeah. And yeah, there like, we perfect. go. Perfect. Yeah. Don't, don't move. You're, should you show him? Yeah, show him now where he's at right now, babe. <laughs> show, show him where... What? Oh, it's behind? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's beautiful. I want him to do an 80s music video after this. We have weird... We have weird cameras. <laughs> <laughs> we need new ones. We're actually, I want to get like HD, uh, like 1080p yeah. cameras in here cool, man. and have like good angles we can straight this way. Run those off the new computer. Yeah. yeah. And I guess we'll just, we'll just That's have to cool. see how many webcams we could throw on the new computer. Yeah. yeah we dude, might be able to do like up, six or seven different camera angles. I can do dude, it. I can hook you guys up with like 12 bay USB like port that just like connects to the side. Nice. Feed that USB ports and you can have, you know, Whatever cameras, like we sell cameras too. So, oh, we're looking to some night, maybe HD. We're cameras. looking for yeah, really high end, high end HD cameras that will work for webcams. 
Yeah. Like the highest end like webcam HD that, that you can get. I have a Logitech that's 1080p that's terrible. It's it's a f probably a couple of years old though. I've got I've got one of these in my room. Yeah. Oh, you're just fine. These are like little 720 ones though. Yeah, these, these aren't are even 720, 1080. they're not even 1080p. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I've got all I've got is like co coffee grounds in my in my cup here. Ew. See, this is why you should get someone in the industry to be making the coffee. Although I haven't been bringing coffee home lately. Hey, what's going on in the chat? In the chat? There were, uh, Howie was talking about how he uh, tuned in a little late. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's talking about intense nightmares. Yeah, actually, I've been having really crazy-ass dreams since I stopped smoking weed uh, every night because... Like, I guess I just never, I very rarely have dreams, but they've been really vivid the last few nights. I have had, I've also had some uh, more vivid than normal dreams. It's like when I smoke a lot of pot, sometimes I don't dream. Or if I dream, it's not that much. Hmm. It's odd. I don't know. Anne's yelling something at us from the other I, room. I, I don't know. If Anne! <laughs> Babe, if you're listening to this on the web feed, which you are... <laughs> I have headphones on. I can't hear you. Yeah, in the we, room. we all have headphones sorry. on. We can't hear you. You got to come over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, everybody, go go like the Rebel Mistress on Facebook. Yeah, she's uh yeah she's, she's blown new, up. Yeah, she's a new uh she's a new hot shit. Right, biggest thing since Ash the Studio Cat. That's saying a lot too. Because Ash is oof. Ash has a doppelganger. By the ooh, way, you should say that on the on the air. Yeah. <laughs> The LRN Studio Cam. It'd be cool if they can sync this into the LRN Studio Cam. What the hell? I'm not... Oh, the chat room shut off. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And, uh,. Just want to let you guys know uh, we are now syndicate well all the, of our syndications that we're on right now. Right now we are live on LRN.FM. We're also now live on IPM uh, Nation. We also are uh, syndicated on uh, J Rev Radio and Voluntary Virtues on YouTube. Uh, but it's great to now be on live on two different uh, online radio stations, which is great. Hopefully we can pick up a couple more. Uh, but uh, I love the fact that we're live on multiple different stations. Yeah. So I don't even know what stations are really hot right now. Like I, a, yeah, I remember Next News Network being a thing, but I don't even know if it's still going on. It seems like LRN is like the big one, the big dog out there now uh, when it comes to Liberty uh, content. Um, are we on LMR? We were a year ago, maybe again at some point. I don't know. That's a whole other drama baggage that happened a year ago. Do you ago. want to talk about that real fast? Um, uh, uh, actually, I was in talks earlier today about getting back on. I didn't finish. So I guess we could. Um, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you offend somebody by talking about this, if there's anything in this world that can be destroyed by the truth, then it should be. God, I love Will's profile picture like that, man. <laughs> that quote is it's beautiful. So, it's so good. And it applies good. to so many things. It does. It really, really does. Um, we were live on LMR uh, a year ago. Probably saying this now, probably won't be on there ever. But, I was <laughs> but uh, we, were lot, we were on LMR and for like two weeks, and then they heard us talk about J-Rev. They had a falling out. Apparently, the owners of LMR and J-Rev used to be just LMR. They broke apart. I went on both. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't really know. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I knew, like, who was part of it. but We were I mean, on, like, rival stations. Rival I think, stations. But you weren't aware of the drama between the no. rival stations. And we got bumped from LMR because of it. Um, I like to be back on LMR. I used to listen to LMR before I moved here. Me too. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind being back on there. And it's, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love LRM, but and I wouldn't mind being back on there. That's a Liberty Movement Radio for those listening who don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're not uh, on there, but maybe we'll be at some point. But uh, yeah, let's. At, at, at the end of the day, though, don't get me wrong. I love being on all these different stations like LRN and IPM and all that jazz. But I mean, for me, it's the it's the podcast feed. You know, I, I as much as I used to listen to LRN all the time, I all I used to do for the most part, I went to LRN.fm and I looked at all the shows that are listed there, and I subscribed to all their podcasts. 
That's what I did back in don't the day. Don't listen to that, Ian. Don't, 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 I'm, not, I'm telling people to listen to all right. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but, back when uh, uh, Google had that uh, RSS reader, right? Oh, you remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah, I that's do. old school. Yep. Yeah, man, and they yeah. got rid of it. That's how I got all my Liberty content was I subscribed to every podcast that I could think of. Like This is yep. right after I got in like Ron Paul and I, stuff. I just use uh, 90% of the time I use Stitcher for when I'm listening to podcasts. Sometimes I'll, listen, I'll use Pocket Cast. Just because you can throw an RSS feed, and a lot there are a lot of podcasts that aren't that are not on Stitcher, which they should be if you're a podcast and you're listening to this and you make a podcast, get on Stitcher. Do, that's what I use. How do you get on Stitcher? Is there like a paywall? You gotta no, it's no paywall. Literally, just like just like how you get on iTunes. Um, I want to do a little. Uh, I guess I want to do a podcast shop here. Um, basically, with both iTunes and Stitcher, the way you get on, you basically take your RSS feed of your of your show content, and you so you sign up for an account with like with iTunes or with Stitcher. And it's the same thing. You just all it's a one time thing. You sign up for the account, you throw the RSS feed, and you're done. But you have to create the account to do it. Where like other apps like uh, Pocket Cast and um, God, there's a few other ones like uh, Podomatic and all, all other ones. You, literally, they just search the internet for those keywords for that RSS feed and and sync it into it. So that's more like open. But uh, I find Stitcher to be such a high end uh, podcast app compared to like other ones personally. And what's the Liberty scene like on Stitcher? Um, it's pretty decent. Uh, most of the LRN. Uh, um, podcasts are on there. I know I listen to Sovereign Tech a lot on there. I listen to Free Talk Live. Uh, I used to listen to Adverse Man. I don't know if this, does Kokesh still do a podcast? I thought he came back with his show. I he came back and left. I I'm not no listening idea. to it. I, I'm not listening to it. Oh, I used to be a listener. I used to listen to it via Stitcher. There's a really cool uh, YouTube video that came out of him talking to my old Liberty on the Rocks group in California. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the same exact same bar that I spoke at when I went to when I was out there in, uh, in your old stomping ground. Yeah. It was kind of crazy. I'm like, oh, I was there. It's I cool that they're still those, going. I talked to those people. Yeah. It's only going because those people haven't moved yet. So, <laughs> Mari, <It's>, uh, <laughs> um, Patrick, um, Rob, other Rob, other Rob, Rob Freebeard. Well, uh, yeah, but that's, Rob, get here when you can. I understand what's going on. Yeah. You get here when you can. I just, yeah, I want to hear as quickly as possible. Oh, so do I. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I heard he's not going to pork fest. That's sad. Really? Yeah, I saw a post that he might not be able to make it. I've seen a, a few grumbles about, I mean, this doesn't apply to Freebeard, but a few grumbles about, oh, I don't know about if Porkfest is even going to be good this year. Have you seen that, Matthias, on Facebook? I've seen some kind of mixed um, speculations about how Porkfest will be. Is this also the last year that Buzz is doing a party? Yes. Yeah. This is the last year for that. So someone's going to have to pick up the so, torch next year. You should. Oh, you're a great I dancer. Should. Yeah. Well, but I wouldn't. You know, but you've, I mean, it's not about dancing. MVG's about, big gay dance party. Yeah, MVG's big gay. No, dance I couldn't party. continue the theme. It would have to be like Why Mateus's you? bong hit chill session or something. It would have to be something more unique to what now I can for deliver. Something completely different than what Buzz can deliver. The to totally different themes. They uh, should go with something different. Well, if the no. if the if the if the proprietor changes, or if the we just have a personality changes and the party there's, change, there's no? yeah. Pork Fest is long enough and big enough to have another big dance party on a different night. They last year they, they did had, they had like the uns party or something. Yeah, the uns yeah, party there as was well. The EDM party. There was the gay party, and then there was the um. Wasn't there something else? Oh God, I'm I'm, I'm drawing a blank. There was a blur, man. There was a third. There was there. a third dance. There were a few dance parties. My thing is um. You know, Damn, what was I'm, it? I'm like super awkward. Like I'm not a big dancer. I don't dance really. That's what so. drugs are for, man. I know, but like I don't want to take a bunch of drugs and then go dance. Yeah, like, you do. Exactly. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Uh, That's what makes you want to go dance. That's what, yeah. It's like, oh, it's like saying it's like saying I, I don't know, man. Okay. I don't want to open wait, up wait, my lungs you, to all this clean air. Are you telling and me to exhale it? that you're not going to be dancing at the big gay dance party? I didn't last year. I just kind of like walked through it. Of course, I was tripping on acid at the time, but. Well, this year you're going to be dancing. I, I don't like that's not a thing that I do. Like, <laughs> you got to push the envelope. You got to get weird. Got to get weird. Got to get weird. Got to get weird. I'm going to have to get on some, some. Don't get too weird. Fun drugs. But you got to make it weird for you. Like, I'm not much of a dancer either. But huh. last, year's, but last year's big gay, uh, you know, big gay dance party. Were you dancing? I, yeah, of course I was dancing. I had a good partner. I had a good time. It was an amazing dance. Um, and like I didn't dance much at the at the uns at the EDM thing, mm -hmm. but that was that, fun to watch. That was though. a different beat than I can yeah. really keep up with. Yeah, but I was just chilling. I was trying drinking. to trying to break into dancing. Yeah. It's uh, it's I don't know. It's it's Lose weird for yourself me. to dance. It's weird for me. But <laughs> yeah. all right, 
the amount of you playing that song, you could yeah, eventually you could lose yourself to that. Yeah, it's gotta be the right. I don't know. It's gotta be like the right song, though. I don't know. I feel like I feel like none of those parties were my scene. Were my kind of party. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. You just so as on. big and gay as I am. I don't. I don't know. Just really. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm too uptight. Maybe you need to loosen up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cecilia's going to be there, Dad said. That's true. You got to be there. That's true. Oh, speaking of, you want to you bring, talk about the trigger? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can mention that. Yeah. Um, we'll go for it. Yeah. Uh, Cecilia is, uh, she's come to Manchester. So that's huge. She's yeah, been talking I, about doing this for how long? Uh, well, all, I don't know. The years? She's, yeah, she's apparently. finally moved to Manchester. And uh, I, said, I said it's off air. I want to say it's on here. Cecilia. Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's it's a great thing. It's wonderful that she's here. Um, we're definitely going to be celebrating at the next New Movers party. Yeah, she, she's she's part of the New Movers party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right, yeah. honored guest. She's right. an honored guest of the New Movers party. She gets yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she gets a New Movers party. It's kind of crazy. There's a, there's a few more names I recognize on that list as well. Have you taken a look at the list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a few people on there. It's weird. I, a couple of people on there. I feel like they've already been there for a while. Um, yeah, but uh, see, for me, I'm excited about the new movers parties to be perfectly honest. Because last year during the summer, when it was warm out, and oh, they yeah, opened up the back, the yep. grill with the um, the grilling out and whatnot. I remember there's a couple times like a hundred some people there, yeah, and you had more, you had a higher mover rate to begin with, right? Yeah. Had larger volume, and then including the outside, it's just amazing. It was crazy, they've been crazy throughout the whole winter, it's, it's true, you know. Yeah. So now I, I have high hopes for the summer, it's gonna be. And it falls on Cinco de Mayo. You guys, when you move here to Manchester, be sure that's the first party you go to. Absolutely. When we lose the feed to Alaret, I freak out every single time when it, when it just breaks <laughs> it for a out. second. I'm like, holy shit, did we just lose uh, the feed? I've actually Is it gone? been kicked out of the chat room uh, because our Wi-Fi kicked me off. And yeah, that's I'm what Anne in. was yelling about earlier. Oh, tonight? He sent, he sent me two minutes ago. I think so. Does he want to come over? Yeah. He message me. He, sure. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Hey, guys in the chat room, uh, if. I, I got kicked out of the chat room because I got kicked off the Wi-Fi, but Rob is still on there. That's kind of annoying. LRN.FM. I wish I had that voice. I would do so much with that voice. He, he can come over, but I'm not, I, don't have, I don't have show prep to have him on. I don't know if he wants to be on or if he, he can come over out. and hang out. I don't care. That's I'm. He can chill on the couch and hang yeah, out. We don't That's have like cool. I don't have. Either. I don't. We we're we're short a headphone and I don't have show prep to yeah. go forth with him. But he can come over. I yeah. my understanding is that he just wants to come over. Oh yeah, yeah. He can come over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think he wants to sit in. <laughs> sure, dude. Yeah, is man. this picture normal or weird? On Tinder? Yes, that's a weird picture to have as your hell? Tinder picture. Why would why would someone put that on Tinder? Well, there's a baby, but then there's also something growing on the baby. Yeah. Maybe weird. maybe it's just like she's gone on so many dates with so many guys who the second they see the thing on the baby are like, oh, that's it. They just bail. They, they bail that she's just leading with that. <laughs> right well it's just her filter at this just, point yeah like, you just All right, lead it. with the most negative thing about you which really when you think about it dating websites that's that's what it should be like oh right? god honest dating websites look here's the thing uh i'm a great person i've got a nice personality but i have a dead tooth you know uh, <laughs> sorry i'm a i'm a loving warm person but my daughter's got a thing on her forehead right right um, I'm, I'm, you know, personable. Your parents will love me, but I'm an anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a great thing to lead with. Yeah. <laughs> For a lot of people, though, that's a red flag. Oh, you don't say. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, when we'll get back, do you still want to hit your your philosophy? Yeah, man. M- right. MVG's new church. Okay. The church, church of the church of the G. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a church, what would it be called? Wow, that's a great question. Never you should of that. make your own church. That's actually a part of the Shire Dude Church. Is that everyone should have their own church? <laughs> it's pretty meta. Oh, oh, Rob, if you want later on, we can also talk about Lieberland. Yeah. What's with the other and feed? That's freaking me out every time. The 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 pauses on the other end feed is just bothering me. Yeah, I don't know if that's our. That might be our internet connection. But I don't think so. Yeah, our Comcast I mean, is terrible. Get, we gotta get done, man. I, I, is there? I'm such a. We're such slacktivists. Is there a better? There's no better company we can go. No, with, right? that's a problem in New Hampshire. It's Comcast or Fairpoint. Fairpoint sucks. Yeah, from what I've heard from everyone. What do we? So we just pay Comcast more? Is I'm that just, how they get you? I'm just willing to pay Comcast more money at this point. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, and especially since you canceled that one thing. Yeah. back with the rebel love show here and I, I love this bumper real fast if you guys are in the the rebel love club on facebook you'll see i posted a playlist of all of the bumpers that we have finally yeah um, i was playing them earlier today if you didn't hear them oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have them on my phone actually yeah. <laughs> yeah um i love these bumpers by the way like it, it's it feels I, I know stephanie murphy didn't like them she didn't no she said that on the show she didn't care for them you didn't really hear that? yeah I miss that. She said she liked a couple of them. Wow. I know. That hurts my soul. It's okay. I like them. Okay. Anyways, um, but no, I love those bumpers. Uh, but uh, MVG, you want to go into some deep philosophical conversation, don't you? Uh, sure, sure. Um, I mean, we were talking earlier before the show a little bit, uh, just talking about what's new, what's going on. Um, so there's an interesting an interesting kind of mental kick, I guess, that I've been on lately. Um, if you want a, if you want a dose of the bizarre and a dose of the inverted, uh, then I suggest that you YouTube a fellow named Alan Watts. He is, or he was, he's dead now, uh, but he was kind of the Eastern, um, or you know, kind of a foremost Western interpreter of these kind of Eastern philosophies. Uh, and I went through school, you know, I I got my, uh, I got a minor in philosophy, right? So I took literally a course, you know, you know, on metaphysics and, you know, very kind of groundbreaking things like that. And we studied some of these similar topics, right? Like Buddhism. Uh, we studied, you know, how do the Hindus see the world, things like that. And it was kind of fascinating, uh, but it didn't really, didn't really catch on to me. Uh, and then I started attending the class high and it started to make a lot more sense. Um, just like <laughs> I, I could see, you know, because like when you're sitting in a, you know, a philosophy class and you're like me and you're kind of analytical and you kind of want really cut and dry, hard, you know, explained answers to things. And your teacher tells you that all of reality is a dream of Vishnu. It's sleeping on the lotus flower coming from the navel of Shiva. And it's like all of this is like such some kind of bizarre acid trip. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really, really frustrating for somebody who really wants like cut and dry answers like two plus two equals four. Right, but when I started, but you know, I started. I I, I took a gamble, because it's, it's always a gamble when you go to class high. Yeah. Um, because I have the tendency to want to be more involved than I can probably justify being, and so I end up speaking more, getting involved more. But then I'm I'm also high, so I just stumble and become weird. So it, it can very easily like it's like falling off a cliff, kind of. So it's a it's kind of a double edged sword, but it helped me understand a little bit. And then I kind of took a couple of years break, you know, I graduated and moved on with my life and so forth. And I kind of rediscovered this topic on YouTube and it's just fascinating. It's really, really bizarre. Alan Watts. Alan Watts. Yeah. And he's kind of a British, kind of a British American philosopher. So he, he, you know, he's funny. He's not, he's not like some kind of like Raji, like from India, um, but you know, very interesting, very kind of erudite. And it's, it's funny just the, uh, his perspectives on the world and mm. the kind of jokes that he makes and the kind of ways that he sees things. Uh, it's, it's very liberating in a certain sense, which is why I wanted to tie it into this show because so much of the show is about 
um, freeing you know yourself right acting freely and living freely in your mind right and and and, and sticking up for what you think is right being kind of a one man uh, you know just just relying on yourself just just pursuing freedom from an individual basis and so it's interesting I mean I don't know how much you guys talk much about like mental freedom or being like free from the you know, worries and shackles of other things in your life, right? As a, as a way to be free, yeah. right? But I know that, if, I, I think that John Bush talks a little bit about it. And I think some other libertarians talk a little bit about it. I don't think it gets played enough. Um, but it's an interesting, you know, it, it's interesting when you start thinking of your relation to everything from the kind of Eastern perspective. It's like, yeah, you're tiny and insignificant. And yeah, you're just, you know, a wave of the ocean that rises and crashes and you don't make any difference. But, you know, that's liberating. It is. It is. Because then you realize that the whole thing is just a game. You right. realize that the whole thing is just one big theater, just a big dance, just a big, a big for nothing, just so a big show. You can do whatever you want, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You start to lose uh, the anxiety of like my ego and my personality and like who am I and how are people going to see me? And when you realize that, you know, we're all just part of the same pink goo that makes up everything, you know, we're all just part of the same kind of kind of universe and so i can't get too esoteric in it obviously but no i know what you mean and, the, and it's funny the irony in that is once you once you are free of those shackles of, of the thinking of oh well i don't matter and so what what should i do nothing um once you actually start having fun with life you in do general anything. you actually can gain like notoriety in doing that <laughs> yeah and right. actually make a difference yeah that is funny because right then you don't care anymore yeah and so you just pursue your pleasures and you pursue your own satisfaction you know as as are idiosyncratic as they are, right? And so, you know, you as Shire Dude probably know a little bit about bizarre idiosyncrasies. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, but you can actually, you know, live in a way that is satisfying to you internally and you don't have to think about, like, how are people going to see me? How am I going to put this on a resume? How is this going to look on LinkedIn? How am I going to, oh my yeah. God. Right? How are you doing this? How am I doing this? Yeah. Um, or are you? Or are you? I take it. Are you completely implementing this? Or are you trying to it's, implement it's this a, with your life? It's definitely a flirtation. It's definitely. It's definitely a strong flirtation. It's interesting. You know. I. I mean, for the viewers that aren't aware, I guess I've had you know uh, a certain course that I've taken intellectually and mentally over the years, and I would be most surprised if I came to reside thinking you know in my thought space somewhere that was like with the Eastern religions or some kind of view of the world like that. I've always thought that was very very bizarre. Just very, very out of out of left field, and just very for strange people in strange times that I don't know anything about. But it's interesting taking through, you know, a, a kind of a Western intellectual through this journey, uh, or this journey, or through these ideas. Um, it's just it's it's it brings kind of new light to the idea, and it and I I'm able to see how it relates to my life. So you know, just watching the video, I'll just start laughing just for some reason because he'll make just some kind of <laughs> yeah. joke or anecdote and I can't stop laughing about how that particular episode happened to me at work when I bumped into, one of, you know, my you know, corporate friend in the office and we, you know, it's like, I, we know each other but we don't know each other's names because we haven't been introduced and it's just like an awkward thing and it's like, you know, just little tiny anecdotes that I think about, about the trappings of our life, right? So, we all have trappings, right? We have attachments, right? Yeah. And one of the bigger ones is our alter egos and our day jobs. Oh right? yeah, I always feel like I go under, like I'm going undercover, or I'm a whole different person when I'm at work. When I'm here, I've got it. Yeah, I've got to change up, right? You can't, I can't just be full bore, Matthias von Gutenberg at work. You know, they're not paying me to be full bore, Matthias von Gutenberg, right? But I just get a little bit of satisfaction. Um, when I remember or when I remind myself, when I think in terms of, you know, um, there's no pressure for me to do something miraculous or heroic or whatever. There's no like anxiety or trappings that I just can act the way that I want to act in the way that is natural to me. Um, and I try not to think of what other people care. I try not to think of the like identity associations where like, but I'm a Christian. How can I do this if I like? Yeah, you shed your just, labels. These are just trappings. Yeah. yeah. One thing I think that helps living here is because you're surrounded by people that are very open minded as it is. Right. You can't really be whoever you want to be here. That's the point that you've been that you've yeah, made a I lot. I make that all the time. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not, I am nowhere near the person I was uh, when I got on the plane than when I got off. Mm -hmm. Like because the people I was surrounded by back home. Uh, well, this is my home, but like back in Illinois, uh, it was to a point where like there's a lot of social anxiety to like you know 
be the person you are. Like I always make the argument, like just being a liberty person, you know, you're always arguing with people like, you know, this is why we should, you know, be free, blah, 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 blah. Right. I don't have to do that here. If I do this with like, you know, like doing activism stuff or whatnot, but like the social groups I'm in, no one was like, yeah, we get it. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. They're, everyone's on the same page. Everyone's right? on the same page. So it's like, oh, cool. So actually, I, I don't have to do that anymore. You know, what's interesting. Uh, you may be able to relate to this. Um, when you cross from a kind of minarchy into an anarchism, right into the ideas of anarchy, yeah. At, at least for me, maybe you can corroborate this. I felt like it had been like a whole like like a veil had been lifted, oh like God, a yeah. film had come off me. Like I was yeah. seeing with new glasses, or that I was some kind of some kind of spell or delusion was over for me, right? That I I had like 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 when I became kind of agnostic or atheist, right? It was like oh that that illusion is gone. I don't have to see life through this particular weird lens of trying to justify how this group organizes its deadly activities and whatever, whatever, right? Like as an anarchist, I don't have to deal with that delusion. Well, that delusion that they operate correctly and the illusion that, you know, they're important, right? That's just like my life is now, I see life more clearly by, by being an anarchist than I was before, right? Like, is that something that's familiar with you? Absolutely. Um, I, mine, mine was a little bit, I would label a little bit differently. I can see the whole rel, um, point of like removing the veil of what, what uh, the world we live in really is. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you on that. For me, it was, I kind of relate to more of uh, holding on to like the last rung of a ladder. All right. I'm like, and I can't see the bottom of like a pit. Of a rabbit hole. <laughs> right, and, right, right. And it's like, I know there's a bottom. I'm going to survive. But it's like, it's just, I, I'm trying to hold on to that. Like, for some reason, the state has to exist. You know, there has to be some reason. And then uh, in 2012, I voted for the concert. I hated it. I let go. I've been on this path. I'm just falling down the rabbit hole. And it has been like a rabbit hole since I've been so coming down. The tie-in I was trying to make was that when you start to take the perspective and you can actually see, when you know enough of his perspective to see through his shoes, the analogy is that just as our anarchists see the state as, or the status as a kind of um, illusions, tricks mm -hmm. of the mind, right? In the same way, the hardcore Buddhists and the hardcore Hindus people would see like people who believe in like the ego as under a, an illusion. Yeah. Like the, you believe you're Robert Mathias. That's something unique makes up Robert Mathias, who you are, your soul or your imprint or your, your consciousness or something like to them, that is the illusion. And so like they have like moved beyond that. So it's interesting. I remember there was a talk that he, that he gave some co college lecture or whatever. And he was, you know, very esoteric talking about like, time and causality and how they see it or whatever and he made a comment about how in this time you know and and he made some kind of comment about how there will be no government and what you know there will be no government because of this and then when this happens there will be no state because people will be self-governing it's like he's talking about when, when everyone's kind of gotten rid of this illusion of the ego right he talks about how it's like well everyone will be clearly at that point clearly everyone will be self-governing there'll be no need for a government and we'll live peacefully so it's like to him he's not like hardcore anarchist right but he's like so strong in the understanding of this type of idea that the anarchism just kind of gets swallowed into it it's just like part of it it's like it's no, just a logical it's like a no conclusion yeah. it's like a no brainer it's like of course well, how you know right um you like you read any of the old ancient you know chinese philosophers like lao tzu or whatever you know Taoists, and they're not like explicitly like end the state this is a monopoly on violence but like just the way that they speak and what they propose and what they talk about and how they like remark it's like clearly he didn't have any fucking respect for this band of robbers like he didn't have any modicum of like decency for these fucking ba these, these people like it's just like implicit in that understanding yeah. yeah so when i heard that i was like rewind it what did you say again it was like it was exciting i gotta watch this man yeah I, I it, it's cool that. it's he's funny um i'll start watching it after i start smoking again yeah <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll treat myself to uh, watch something like that after I started smoking. Yeah, again. absolutely. Trippy thoughts, dude. Because like, um, I don't want to go on too much about this, but one of the interesting things that he brings up is the understanding of time. And in the Western world, we tend to think of time as very like linearly. It's like a river. It's like the past becomes the present, and the present becomes the future, and it all kind of you know it's causally structured in that way. 
Um, and in the way that he sees it, it's like on its head. It's like, actually, in the first place, the past is nothing but just memories people have. And the future is just speculation about what will happen, just conjecture. So neither one of those exists in any real form. And it's only really the present that exists. We're on break. Oh. Yeah, you, so, we're on he, break. so he has this understanding that it's... How's it going, bud? Good to see you. Hey, dude. Good to see you, man. So he, he has this... Cool. Yeah, this looks totally different. On the internet. Then on the internet. <laughs> yeah. If you're watching the feed, there's there's two MVGs right now. Yeah, it's pretty trippy. Sorry, dude. Hmm. So he he has this weird perspective that it's actually the present that causes the past. The present causes the past. Yeah, in the sense that what we remember as the past is just a collection of our memories, mm -hmm. and those things are getting updated as new information comes in all the time. So. Uh, this is Alan Watts. Alan Watts. So he basically makes the argument that... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, indeed. But he basically makes that argument that it's like... The time the past, doesn't exist. The past is always... Well, I mean, now exists. Like this time slice, like whatever we're Just in right now. Here. Yeah, but anything else doesn't. Hmm. And so what we think of as the past is always being updated with well, current information. So it's like the present really does change the past. But the thing is with, te true. with technology, it's, it's, it's though... Like, I don't know how to believe it. I don't know what to, like, I don't know what to think of it. Well, yeah, history, is, yeah it's, well, with technology, with all the video and audio that's being recorded throughout just not us, but everybody, you know, all these pictures and photos and videos and everything like that, that's actual recording. We're actually physically creating, We're creating chunks of past. Chunks of, of, of past segments that yeah. we, like, 20 years from now... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but like, you know, we'll we'll go back, and we'll see all this. You know, we'll 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 be able to. You'll be able to watch this episode. Yeah. Right. Know? No. I mean, if, it, the recording will exist, of course, and the recording yeah. will exist of a Rob Mathias and a Shire dude of a Mateus that are of a certain age and of a certain build and of a certain whatever, and it'll be about topics that we talked about now, and mm -hmm. it'll exist, sure. But that's that's not really what he means. What he means is that you can't like. The only time that you can possibly ever live in is now. You can't live in the past. I can't go back no, to the past, no. and I can't go to the future. The only time right? That does exist is exactly. The time the slice instant. is the so, instant. Is the moment. So time machines will never be a thing because of that. Well, that's theoretical. Yeah, I don't know. You know in terms of space. I think but if like, time machines existed, then wouldn't we have seen someone come back? From the that's future? an interesting argument. I've yeah. Heard. Well, we there is someone that came back from the future, and I wish it wasn't that's me. True. It Yo. was Rob Mathias. <laughs> Yeah. At least back. I like my own photo. So that's <laughs> that's something. Rob Mathias from the future. If you see uh in the end of Doge Fest, the Shire Dude episode, episode two, yeah. uh, we talk about Rob Mathias from the future. He's been hanging around the quill lately. And it's just really weird. Every time I see him Does he know that he's he, in Doge Fest? I don't know. He keeps warning us about some kind of premonition or <laughs> some kind of prophecy. I don't think I can't yeah. make it out. It has to do with Ian, I think. Yeah, you know, there's a moment. Uh, where uh, he ran into me and Anne, and there was a photo that we took like a week or so, like a, a week or so ago. You sat on the couch. Uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, moment a couple weeks ago where uh, uh, it, it's funny because it's a it's a it's a naked photo of me on the internet. It's just it's because Anne's sitting on my lap. I don't know, you know, we're, we're, she's we covering get, up the naked. She's bits. covering up my naked bits, and it just it was like the it was like one of the first selfies I took with my new phone and like made an Instagram photo. It's like called "Spreading the Love," and you can see like my tattoo, and she's doing a peace sign. And it's like it was like a real cool angle, blah blah blah, with this in the background, all that jazz. And uh, he's like, he came over to us and said, "I just want to say." I really love that photo you guys posted about uh, spreading the rebel love. Why would he tell that to his past self? I don't know. And every time I see him now, I was, I was like, am I talking to myself from the, from the future? Is he trying to tell me something? He's on Facebook, by the way. Oh, he's on Facebook? Yeah. Oh. I believe he's using a fake name, though. John Redman. John Redman. Yeah. That's a fake name. I'm pretty sure that's a fake name. Is that what he wants to be called? I heard, I, heard, I know of a Jamie Redman. Well, he can't call himself Rob Mathias. He could. <laughs> That'd be weird. There's a Rob Mathias from maybe, Africa that friended me on Facebook. Maybe. He, maybe it's he a real like profile. A... Like, it's like, it has like years of like stuff. Wow. It's like from like, uh, maybe he's one of the Cameroons that used to listen to LRN.FM. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he could be like Bobby Mathias. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. 
You could go. You could go by Bobby. Oh, I hate the name Bob. Of course you would, but maybe your future self takes it. Roberto Matthias. I'll never. We need a Mexican. You know Rob what Mathias. they do? You know what they do at work? One one of the uh, one of the, the sales managers there who's not even there anymore. She called me Robert once, and now there's still salespeople. Oh, that's that, weird. Like, call me Robert. Do you tell them? Please don't call me Robert. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, if you're watching the, uh, if you're watching the uh, YouTube feed of us, uh, we're going into a deep philosophical conversation with MVG here. So if you're listening to the podcast, that probably won't make the podcast because you know I'm too lazy editing. But it's on the YouTube feed. So uh, if you always want some sort of uh, bonus content to the show, yeah, it's the show between the show. Yeah, it's the show between. I never even thought of it that way. Yo, dog, a lot of times, I heard you like Rebel Love Show. Listen between the lines. <laughs> you know, right. it, it's also crazy because you're you're not one of those people. But a lot of times, guests that come on for some reason they think that the mics aren't hot during the LRN breaks. Even though right? we tell them, we tell them, and they'll just start. They loosen up. They loosen up, and they just they'll say stuff that like they probably shouldn't say. Right. <laughs> they just and open up. I don't edit it out. There's a couple times I'll edit something out. Uh, which is like rare. I've done it like twice um, where something that was said that really shouldn't have been said. But in in the grand scheme of things, I never edit that out. It's just there. Sometimes it's like a dead space of like 30 seconds or something like that. Um, just because I'm a slack that was, I don't want to edit everything. And once it goes to YouTube, I'll edit because I got to figure out how to get the LRN feed in there. But at the grand scheme of things, I, I like leaving those breaks on the YouTube channel because it's kind of a, it's, it's like the show behind the show or a show within the show. And it's only there on the YouTube feed. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I will throw it in the podcast feed, but for the most part, the podcast feed, I usually, sometimes I have thrown the entire breaks in. Usually I don't. Usually it's just like the straight up, like from the LRN feed, it's just the podcast usually. Or if it is, it's, it's not that much. Um, but I leave it all up on the YouTube feed. So, uh, yeah, go, go listen to the, uh, go subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash rubble love show. And, uh, you can get the, the show behind the show, especially with some guests in past episodes. Cause it gets, uh, they really loosen up. There's not a lot though, that I would, I would want you to cut out of, of me in the show. I, you know, I mean, there's a few things I don't want to share with the world, but for the most yeah. part, I think I live in public. Oh, so do I. That's a, that's one thing I love about my life is, you know, I, I live publicly, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people don't. And there's, of course, a lot of libertarians. They're always very super private, you know, like, oh, my God, you put photos all the time or video and blah, blah, blah. Up and like, see, here's the thing. Most people, normal people do that. They record themselves doing stupid things or they put photos up and whatnot. I know we're living a very public life, but I'm okay with it. Like, if, you know, if something came out about something I'm doing, you know, now I don't care. Like, I'm not ashamed of anything I'm doing whatsoever. You know, if that came, comes out like publicly, like some weird nude shot or, you know, like some like Snapchat, you know, thing that someone like took a screenshot of and posted, like whatever. You guys do have a pretty liberal nude policy for this house. That's true. We do. Yeah. Yeah. We're not nude now, but uh, it, it is a, a close optional house. We, we, yeah, we tend to be in robes, but, you know, sometimes those robes don't get tied, you know. It's, it's coming summer. Like, I'm not even going to wear a robe coming soon, man. It's getting hot. It's, it's getting, getting hot. By, the, by it's Cinco de Mayo. Too hot for a robe. Yeah, I heard it's going to be like 80 degrees Cinco de Mayo. Now, that's nothing, you know, back when I was back in California. But here, you know, it also it gets humid. Very humid. Yeah. It gets very humid in the summer. Yeah. I don't know. I'm comfortable with myself. I don't care. It's my home. I want to walk around <laughs> as, I, as I please. Right. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, this is a studio. But you know what, folks? I ain't, we're not uh, filthy rich people here where we actually have a whole other building. It's our radio studio, you know. That, that doesn't exist. In case you guys forgot, we're libertarian activists. Send us money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, if you want us to have a whole other studio, send us like, you know, 20 Bitcoin. That, that'd or be like a good start. 20,000 Dogecoin. If somebody sends no, us like 20 $5. Bitcoin, oh man. I would, do, I would do a naked episode of the Rebel Love Show. If someone sent us 20 Bitcoin, I'd do an episode completely naked. Send some... Uh, do uh, Consider that a pledge. <laughs> a pledge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the naked Bitcoin pledge. Can we make that a thing? That should be a thing. That's not going to be a thing. See, the problem is, we're, <laughs> the problem is, we're men in the liberty movement. Like you know, 
women in the living room they do they do an episode like that and they like you know you send us bitcoin we'll be nude on our show for right. like a, for a segment they're gonna be the like next that. roger veer yeah <laughs> yeah they would be they, they they'd be so rich they can like go wherever they want in the world yeah that, that would happen that's not gonna happen with us hmm. you know but uh, we do. I'm, I'm sure we have a, a, a somewhat of a do, good female. Do you think? Now. Do you think the females in the liberty movement should harness that more? No. They should go no, for here's it. Here's another thing. I want to. I want to. Mateus says no. No, no. I say, I, I say no. Okay. I want to touch on that. Okay. I know a lot of libertarian men get all pissed off at like you know certain libertarian women. Like they're just they're, you're you just know, getting clicks just for getting your clicks. vagina. So what? <laughs> I don't care. Like they're getting clicks for that. Like that's the market speaking. If you're a free market anarchist, that's the market speaking tough shit well why do we i mean we don't you have know? to succumb to what the marketplace of what men want well yeah is concerned i mean you know that was something I, i'm sure that there's female podcasters out there or, or female you know youtube celebrities or celebritarians or whatever that prefer not to uh angle their approach that way right and they probably would you know lose market share and get in your terminology right to the youtube female stars that do exploit their, you know, or not exploit, but that do utilize more of their natural beauty. Um, I don't know. Not a big fan. There's often a sacrifice. I'm not a, I'm not a big, well, there often is a sacrifice, but even if there wasn't, I guess, I guess if there wasn't a sacrifice, it wouldn't be quite so bad, but I don't know. I just feel like it's, uh, there's some kind of a, a, there's missing dignity somewhere. There's some kind of like, there's some kind of like propriety no. that's not being given to the subject or something or okay here i i think this is really the reason why that uh women in the in the liberty movement or community whatever you want to call this um get more attention is because there's not as many of them plain and simple sure. and on top of that like as liberty activists like well look for me i'm a salesperson and you know sex sells and you know women sell they it, the fact that there's not that much of them doing this compared to men they already have a, a step up because, well, on, on top of that, it's, you know, image is kind of a, a thing. It, it is. Sure. Um, and uh, that's an, that's an area that is not as uh, overly saturated as the, the, the male ratio. I, I agree. Yeah. All right. So it's an easier uh, entrance into the market, so to speak, because there's not enough of them doing it. But at the same time, I want there to be a lot more women doing it, regardless of whatever content it may be. And if they're just, you know, they're showing off their you know bodies whatnot to get more attention i don't really care because at the same time if they still have a message that's pro-liberty more and more people are going to see that so i don't really care that oh, well, they're getting attention because they're women good if they're spreading the message of liberty by all means like their posts watch their videos i'm fine with that i have no problem with that like if the if the whole objective of you know, like us as activists is to get more of the message out. And if they, them saying something gets like a minarchist to go anarchist or to get something to move or something to the, the Shire or something along those lines, who am I to say that that's a bad thing just because they're getting attention because they're not a man? I don't care. It's very, it's very, um, hey, it's you, very, it's very utilitarian of you. You triggered Anne's move with your manly wiles. Yeah. Right. That's true. Right. Yeah. Not because she listened to the Rebel Love Show and liked the ideas of liberty. You did it with your dick. No, 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 no. She, she's, she was on board with all. She's this. on board, no, sure. She, she was sure. already right there mentally. It's extra, but, but she liked you, right? Well, yeah, we're in love. So yeah. it should go the other way too, right? Like women should be able to attract men to this movement. Well, I mean, our part of my, I'm sure that I'm sure that did happen. I'm sure that well, yeah, I'm sure that happens all the time. I'm sure first. that there were plenty of I'm sure that there were men that were on the fence that happened to move because of people like Amanda Billy Rock or various other types of female kind right. of rising stars or, or whatnot. I will say this here in the Shire, um, there is a higher ratio of women to men that are pro liberty than in the like delivery movement around the country as a whole. Absolutely. Sure, I agree. All right. It's still only like maybe a third, maybe more, but I would say as a whole and the whole movement, it's maybe only ten percent, maybe twenty tops. But here it's at least a third. Yeah. Well, you know, there's yeah, a new, higher concentration. And most of them are hot too. Just New Hampshire awesome. population and, in general, I believe, has more women than men as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, New Hampshire in general has uh more has a higher concentration of women. Yeah. I think it's funny that there's a whole uh like class of like, you know, new generations that are doing their podcasting, doing their work in a post Billy Rock age. Yes, because Anne, Anne is so. I've had conversations with other people about it. She lives 
in a post Billy Rock record. She doesn't even know. She came into this movement after Billy Rock. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. It, it is. Yeah, we're getting one. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with more post Billy Rock. After this. I'll let run feed. It's still going on. The bumpers are long. The bumpers like are 30 long. 30 seconds long. Yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries. But no, that is true. Like, like, like most, most people I talk to, like, don't really know about that whole earlier mm-hmm. portion of time. Well, there's stuff, that, there's stuff that's happened here. Yeah, there's ancient history. There's ancient history that people bring up. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even know about that. Like, yeah, I mean, we're, we're still newbies here, you know? Yeah. And there, there's. I'm just a, coming up on one year. I've been. I'm gonna say, how long have you been here? Almost two years coming up. Two years will be in August. Two years in August. I've been here since uh, January of last year. So I'm, I'm, you know, this summer, you know, this this uh, August, uh, well, I guess like October-ish would be, you know, my year and a half. Um, it's fascinating when you talk to people here that have been here for like five or six years. Yeah. It's like a lot of shit that's happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. Cecilia's constantly she's constantly oh, she's OG. These stories. I mean, she's in uh, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree in the background, and she's actually she filmed a bit of it too. Yeah, yeah. She's the one screaming at the cop during when he's like being thrown down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so she's always telling me stories. Or like, like uh, you know, I knew in its heyday. Yeah, or like apparently like um when uh, Dave Ridley was open carrying in Manchester and got arrested, and like like paved the way for like free stairs to like you know open carry. In Manch and whatnot, like that's ancient history. I, I was never around for that, you know. I wish Dave Ridley would come around. We're kind of in a post Dave Ridley world. I mean, I guess he still makes YouTube videos, but they're not as good anymore. Well, he's he doesn't release them as much. That and he he doesn't really cover free stare stuff anymore. He kind of does his own thing a little mm. bit, and that's about about it. I haven't really watched any of his. I haven't movies. watched any of it. Yeah, like I know. Yeah, essentially, what you're focusing on. Yeah. Obviously, people will move here and then eventually they'll true branch out. Do their yeah. own thing, you know. And yeah. It's not going to be about the free state. I mean, after we trigger the move, what are we going to what are we going to fucking talk about? Right. Right. You can't just keep what are we going to do? About, oh, I moved here and I did this, and you know, yeah. Like, 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 eventually people do their own. Project. You find your niche. Yeah. yeah. This is all just the prologue. Right. The book doesn't start until the until the move is triggered. Yeah. Well. Hopefully the movie's triggered by the end of the year or or at least a year from now. Mm, no, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see here's the thing. The I don't even move. care if, about the move trigger. People should just move. It's in like twenty seven. Like it's it's been long enough. Well, I decided to move here pretty much the same time that Mateus did. Hmm. And Amanda, as a matter of fact, but Amanda decided to move here and I helped the money was too good. I yeah, I was making good money. You still got you gotta do you first. You gotta you gotta um take care of yourself yeah. before you move. Yeah. But at the same time, I wanted to save and, and be prepared when I did it. Me so yeah, like, I didn't. It, it was a calculated decision. <laughs> I didn't either. That, that I I came here with three thousand dollars, most of it in Bitcoin, and that's it. <laughs> Seriously, that was like that that was it. I got two beat. I got three bags and eight hundred dollars. So mm-hmm. you only had one bag. <laughs> well, I had two bags. One was a cat in it. <laughs> so I had one bag of clothes. There was no more love on the side. Oh, man. It, it was a decision that was already made. It, it, you know, in terms of, like, I knew I was going to do it. I just didn't know exactly when. Yeah. It was one of the good Joel contributions. That, that was it, right? <laughs> yeah. Sure. A lot, a lot of early Shire Dude was actually filmed and performed by uh, Joel. So, hat tip there. It's kind of funny because, because like, like when I first met you, I was like, okay, like he's got the same sort of look as Joel, but he doesn't look anything like Joel. He's got his own thing going on. Mm. So, like, like, Shire- like, to me, but. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, earlier last week, there was supposed to be a new checkpoint. Right. 
right a suspicionless checkpoint. Yeah, as an unconstitutional it. checkpoint, even though the Constitution is nothing more than a goddamn piece of paper. But nonetheless... Not only unconstitutional, put, illegal by their own standards. Put, yeah. you're putting your minarchist hat on, Rob? Yeah. Not, no, not I, no I took it off. You took it it's off a goddamn you, piece of paper. That's what I'm saying. It. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Threw it to the yeah, ground like an old-timey old timey cartoon. You just stepped on it and <laughs> danced on it. He just put it on to show you himself throwing it off afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, uh, the one thing I love about uh, you know I hate the Manch PD, I really do. However, yeah, they suck. They do suck. They're yeah, horrible. fuck those guys. They're yeah. terrible. They're goddamn. They're riding around like goddamn horses this afternoon, and like there's they were out in force. I literally driving. Um, well, Baltimore could be here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think that's what they were worried about. I have no idea. Like there was cops they everywhere, were everywhere today. They're like out. Do you I, think that's what it is? Is Baltimore? I don't know. Really? And showing their maybe. Literally, the local gang showing their showing their uh their force. Yeah, that's don't bother like trying this here. Maybe that's what they're yeah. thinking. Maybe. Hey, hey, how can we scare them straight? I know. A show of arms. A show of force will do it. <laughs> yeah, they're like driving right. around everywhere. It was horrible. Yeah, you know, I felt like we we're in occupied territory. It would have been a great day to go <laughs> wow. cop blocking. Just kind of watching them sitting around. I saw we what yeah. went cop blocking those goddamn ho- uh, mounted police <laughs> horse. I don't know what that, I don't. I don't think just cop like blockers ever really done that. Before. Run to keep up with them. <laughs> horse blocking. <laughs> horse blocking. Yeah, you could do it like on a bike or something. Ass blocking. <laughs> Can we cop block on horseback too? Would that be something that we could do? That'd be kind of cool. If they have horses, why can't we have why horses? Why can't we have some damn horses? We Sherman have, Supreme 2016. Everyone gets a pony. <laughs> everyone gets a pony. We should have we should have we should do cop blocking and horses with drones behind us, like you know, videotaping yeah. it. Let's you just know. let's just do the drones. Just drones following the horses. No, no, we gotta be on horseback following the horses <laughs> with drones over all of us. I thought we were running on horseback on top of drones carrying us to the police. Oh That's my just gosh. crazy talk. Horse drones. Horse drones. Drones that look like little horses. <laughs> Following the horses. Drone-powered horses. Drone-powered horses. <laughs> it's a drone just being dragged by reins and there's a horse in front of it. <laughs> That's really putting the drone before the horse. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyways. This segment got weird quick. Yeah, it did. <laughs> um, anyways, last week, apparently, thank God, you know, we went on this huge damn rant last week about fair weather activists right. at least the cops are fair weather activists <laughs> all right so like it, it was a little uh, cold it's a little cold it's like 40 degrees yeah we can't do illegal checkpoints tonight it's not cold at all i know right uh but luckily they didn't because there there's a huge artsy fartsy party which i didn't want to miss uh so thankfully instead of me being out in the freezing cold hey, if we had to put on armor and strap out and go outside and fight that's what would have happened oh yeah i would have been yeah. out there don't get me wrong i would have yeah. been da- i would have been right. out there you know, some people, now, I'm going to bring this up real quick. Some people, and when I say some people, I mean Ian Freeman. Peace be upon him. Peace, peace be upon him. Was saying, hey, are you guys going to go out and cop block anyway? Like, I know they ruined your checkpoint party, but, well, you should go cop blocking anyway because you're prepared to do it. I, I hear you on that. I hear you, bud. But at the same time, if there's a rocking party, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be at the party. Oh, yeah, me too. You know, Absolutely. like a checkpoint is a fun event to do. Well, that's that, that's where we know where they're There's at. There's more structure. Them. Yeah, it's not chasing them with like. And also, there was the whole issue of the documentary crew. Yes, there's mm. there's a documentary crew that the uh, the Queen Quill, uh, Carla herself, uh, got to the Shire. Props to her, by the way, for doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a documentary crew that was at the Quill recording the the whole artsy fartsy. Not thing. just any documentary crew. Morgan, Morgan Spurlock. Spurlock. The guy who did uh, Super Size Me. Yeah, I didn't see him there, though, but it was his crew. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently they, they love the Free State Project so much, what they deck some of their cameras out with <laughs> regalia, with stickers, and with whatever. Yeah, there's, there's a, a couple little... of cameramen that like love this stuff, and hopefully they come back just because they want to come back. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was cool to see. Uh, they're interviewing a bunch of different people there and whatnot. Um, but it was just cool to see a documentary crew like you know, like there's about a hundred some people, or no, not hundred. I would say maybe like sixty some people. They there. interviewed a few people. Uh, I know they interviewed Marcel Fontaine of 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 Facebook fame. Oh goodness! And they also interviewed <laughs> um, Amanda Bolden, I believe. I saw they, them interviewing they, her. They did the pings as well. That will have been measured. Okay. Amanda Bolden gives, gives great interviews. Yeah, and, oh, yeah she's yeah. great. She's yeah. she's one of the she's better people very, here. She's a very measured person, Amanda. Mm. She's one of the best Democrats I've ever met. The Honorable Amanda <laughs> Bolden. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's she doing? The Honorable, because she's a state she's rep. She's a state rep. What's the honor in that? 
<laughs> Touche, sir. Yeah. Touche. I, see, I say honorable dripping with sarcasm. Plus one. Yeah, <laughs> Plus yeah. one. Bump. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was cool seeing the documentary crew there. Um, at the this Quill. Be at CMT, too, apparently. Yeah, country music television. Hey, whatever <laughs> That's so works. weird. Whatever works, man. Freedom in America let's get or the, something let's like get that. get the right wing over here. Let's get the lefties over here. Well, I yeah, hope we drop some good like, th- program. I came, yeah. I came down from the whole right side, man. There's other people that do the same thing. They, 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 they went conservative. They found Ron Paul, and they came down this way. I'm not, I'm not alone. In that they started boat. looking down that rabbit hole, climbing down the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, and who knows? Maybe... That documentary, someone watching it in Missouri or you know Oklahoma or whatever, they're they're seeing it like, oh, that's oh my god, there's people that actually like you know believe in this so much, they're moving to this place to be free. Yeah, you know right. that you never know. Like that's a whole other outlet that like we don't really get a chance to you know get into. New Hampshire's great know? on gun laws, you know, it's shallow issue state, and they're they're working on even removing that. I think the yeah, right, but they're trying to make a constitutional carry where you don't even have to ask permission. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I hate asking for permission. Yeah, especially Fuck. paying for permission. Especially paying them right to ask for permission. Yeah. Right. you know Fuck it's that. so great and also horrible here that I have to go to the police station and pay them fifteen dollars, fifteen dollars to people I've never even met. You know what they're gonna use that money just for? so I can conceal carry my firearm. It's not gonna be for hookers and blow. No, it's gonna be for them to buy more guns and more ammo and it's gonna pay more for some, body armor. It's gonna, and, yeah, it's gonna pay for some cop to spend eleven more minutes out there doing some suspicionless checkpoint. So right, you can steal more money. So you can steal more money. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's going for. It's like a perpetual motion machine. It's like I saw this great meme on the internet. It showed a cop car and it said like it said road pirates. It said paid by your money to steal your money. Whoa! Wow. Yeah, that's excellent. That's great. Yeah, that, that's really good. Okay, so um, also coming up, uh, we uh, we got Cody and Melinda that need to move. Oh, yeah. Okay. We did mention so, earlier, we're Cecilia talking about Cecilia. Cecilia. We've been talking about this for like the last year on this show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So and the deal was, right, that uh, when Cecilia moves, then Melinda has to move. And yes. of course, they're going to come. Cody and Melinda will come together. Off the Air Live, which is also on All Around. Go check them out on Saturday nights. Yeah. Um, I, I used to listen to Off the Air Live before I moved. Yeah, here. so did I. I love that show. I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't really haven't listened to much episodes since. Um, but uh, the two of them arguing is just really fun to listen to. Speaking of uh, Cody and Melinda, uh, for people listening to podcasts, they were on uh, our show uh, during Liberty Forum. I loved that episode. That was a great episode. Because we, we all kind of went down the same journey, and they're, they're polyamorous. We're polyamorous. None of us were beforehand, so we're talking about all that jazz going on. Um, I will have that released at some point, and the other two uh, episodes from uh, Liberty Forum. Right. We had uh, Ian Freeman and Rich Paul on one episode, the first one. And then we also had uh, Dobby Barker and Jeffrey Tucker on another. Though I know that one has some audio issues, so I don't know if I, I might not even be able to get that one. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We are like blowing through segments. Yeah. I don't know about you, but it feels like I've been here for 15 minutes. Yeah, this right? is great. This is a great show. Like, it is going, it's been like flying this through. This is one of my favorite episodes right, yeah. right now, <laughs> and we're still in it. We still got yeah one break yeah yeah we still got two more segments to go. Well, good. How about we? Like when that, that film crew was there, yeah, they were really disappointed that they didn't get to the checkpoint. True. Yeah, we didn't and mention that. I was that. like, that's all good. Like, there's gonna be more. Just, but, just come back. Just trust me. Yeah. There's this huge party. Enjoy it. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, you're oh, you're talking to me. And everything. It, 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 well, I wanted to like talk to the sound dude. Yeah. Like, what he was working with. Like, yeah, of course you would geek out on audio. <laughs> right, so like, that's that's what I was looking at. I, dude, he had a fucking carbon fiber fucking boom pole. Like that's five thousand dollars. Wow. Boom, right there. Jeez. That's just a pole to hold the microphone. Like, holy day, smokes! I, w- I would buy a painting painter's pole and just rig it up and put a mic on it. Yeah. Why is that any, why is that any better to have a five thousand dollars carbon it's, fiber? It's pole? not really that much better, but gotta have the best. Like it's durable, I guess. Mm-hmm. You can use it to very light. You can use, you can use it to defeat Bears enemies. Is, yeah, much heavier. Yeah, but you can probably use it to defeat enemies. Yes. Carbon well, power. in any case, I just thought like of a new superhero like, called like, Sound like, Guy. Anyway, go on. 
<laughs> It'll help. Yeah, so like I saw the investment that they put into it, mm -hmm. and they were very, very, very sad to yeah. get to see the uh, activism. Yeah. But I, I'm pretty sure they enjoyed the artsy fartsy. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good party. <coughs> Hopefully they got you know some good usable stuff. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we'll see how it. I, I hope it plays out well. Next week, a party dedicated to you and some other folks. New movie. Yeah, new movies yeah. party. Yeah, it's funny because I was at the last one. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, um, I was like uh, you count you count for like what is it? The first like six months, you're technically a new mover. I think that's what people say. It, you should have been counted in that one, not this right, one. Right. But whatever. Hey, how about one of the next segments we talk about? Liverland. Liberland? Oh, I didn't even bring that up. I don't really know much about Liberland, yeah. to be honest. But uh, I, I know, I know a, little a little bit about bit, it. But it, and, and to be honest, it's, it, it seems more like like a republic sort of situation. Interesting. To, yeah, it's a constitutional republic with some direct democracy right, involved. Right, right, right. So, like, it, it's not exactly, you know, what... It's not exactly a Liberland, but... No. <laughs> but it's an interesting thing. It's kind of a misnomer. That something can even be possible... Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. as far as like <laughs> creating a society that we're looking for, that probably hits like ninety four percent. You know what I mean? It probably hits like ninety percent mm -hmm. close to the mark. Um, some elements obviously don't cohere, right. but if you read their constitution, I mean, constitution. Yeah, if you read their constitution, totally kicked off one. If you read their hopes and prayers, we'll we, we gotta get. Oh, well, let's go back. Let's see what's we'll going on in the chat. The it seems like it's uh, it doesn't give them a whole lot of leeway, just as far as the words and the paper go. I, I oh, just, Ian's in there. Amazed by the fact that something anything? like that exists. Yeah, right. Know. You know, that's that's such that's a bizarre. Right. <laughs> you heard me talking it's about bizarre <laughs> in today's world. That's not something that you would expect to happen, right? Like, at all. Explicitly libertarian country that forms, right? Or you know, well, whatever. Not necessarily what as mean? we would see it. Sure. But yeah. 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 Nonetheless, that something like that can take place. Yeah. It is crazy. I have heard. Uh, who did I hear? Hmm. Was it you, Rob? Really. Heard someone describe it as the Rand Paul of constitutions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. If, was that? Um, I think that was Chris. Yeah. So apparently, their constitution um, was lifted from mo mostly lifted from Chris Pasia. You know him, Chris Pasia. I know. Him. Everybody yeah, Well, I know the name. I know the name. Yeah. Um, he's my. I don't know. He's my roommate. I don't know if you met him before. Yes, that's the guy that was a friend of mine that. Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, during the break, we kind of got into the subject of a liberal land. It's in uh, Croatia and Serbia, right? Yeah. In, in between the two. Yep, yep. Right, exactly. So what, what's, you seem to be more of the expert on liberal land than uh, either one of us are. So give, give us the, uh, the sales pitch or what you know, why liberal land is so fantastical in the minds of libertarians. Oh, man, I don't know why it's so fantastical. I, I mean, I, I guess I do. Um, the fantastical thing about it is uh, that it's such a good precedent. Yeah, right? cause, so cause, there's this kind of this idea of um, like everyone's kind of waiting for everyone else to move. Almost everyone's waiting for like something to happen. And I, you know, I think that in the future we're going to see a lot of disintegration of these big, huge nation states. You know, huge, big blocks of countries, just like the Soviet. It's like the Soviet system. Hopefully one day for right. the United States. No, I'm sure, right. Divided between you know, North, yeah. Northeast and South and Midwest or whatever along ethnic or, or New in, Hampshire industrial lines or, or just state lines, yeah. But, you know, um, this, is, this is... The example of Liberland is interesting um, because it doesn't... It, he's, not, he's not claiming any kind of currently used or even um, owned land. It's, it's, a, it's a no man's land between Croatia and Serbia. It, and they've been fighting over it, fighting over the whole land between their border for a long time. And so neither one of them lays claim to the land that he claimed. And it, it's interesting, I, I read some, I guess a, a news article or two on it, and they had quoted the Serbian foreign minister and the Croatian foreign minister or whatever saying something. And they both basically made the point that like this is super trivial and this is nothing at all and this is just some crazy guy on the internet and we're not going to give a comment. But it's weird because 
the fact that they felt that they had to comment that it was so trivial is telling. Right. Because if it was yeah. so tri- so trivial, they wouldn't have commented. Right. They would have just well, they just refused. You know, they just refused to comment. But well, it, it kind of seems like it's like a legalese in regards to like where state boundaries are or country boundaries are. Sure. Um, but they don't. Neither of those countries have claim to that small. I mean, it's only like what seven square miles, something small, something yeah, huge, it's like seven square kilometers. It's yeah. Like, it's like barely bigger than the Vatican. Yeah, which uh, at the end of the day, there's countries that big, so it's like that. Or Monaco, is, yeah, right, sure, completely possible. Sure, you sure. know, um, but it, I find it. I, I see the uh, why so many people are happy, but I know Neil Connor's like you know, jumping up in joy at the possibility of like actually starting fresh. Not, you know, he he kind of labeled it as uh, trying. Like right now, we're we're just trying to like build a free society, like in a prison. You know, we're we're trying to we're fighting all these like gang members just to like to have this freedom. But now, mind you, that's completely not built up. But like it could, you know, if a bunch of people, you know, in Europe and other elsewhere move there, you know, they really should move here. I'm being a little biased, but the the idea of like people moving there and settling that one small area and being free, you know, it's probably a lot easier for people to, for around the country, around the world, to move to the Croatian border than it is for them to move into the United States. I just thought about that. That is just as far as like attracting movers, the process, and the immigration and the citizenship. Um, it's probably a lot easier. So if if you know if there was like another ticket than New Hampshire that wasn't involved in the United States federal government. What I mean, what kind of government is Liberland though? There's a is yeah, there they create yeah. So I think the guy uh, that created it uh, is the president of the government, and he was a politician in uh, the Czech Republic, part of the platform of whatever whatever free citizens something. He was part of the part of the liberal platform, and um. And he basically just w- went out and did this and kind of staked this claim and there, you know, have rules for citizenship. And I, my understanding is that the constitution of Liberland um, is that most of it, I believe, was either very heavily influenced or lifted by a remix of a work by Chris Passia, um, who, who himself uh, remixed... Roderick Long's ideas of libertarian constitutionalism. Right, so Long is an anarchist, but years ago, and you can find it on the internet. You can find Roderick Long that, that did this. He kind of drew up what would the best-looking constitution be from a libertarian perspective. Just, just the game, just, the, just for the fun of it. What would that look like, right? And then kind of Chris, cha- you know, touched it up and changed an attitude. And it, and it seems like they kind of lifted a whole cloth for this liberal thing, which is interesting. Which you know. Is maybe good rather than trying to fiddle and figure it out themselves. It's like, very libertarian oh. of them just to copy something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the propagation yeah. of maybe successful traditions or successful rules or something. But yeah, they are a constitutional republic with some kind of direct democratic elements in it. I do know uh, that even though Serbia and Croatia and probably other governing bodies do not recognize Liberland as a sovereign nation, Google Maps recognizes it as a geographical name in that's geographical what, location and that's yeah. what counts that's what well that's, that's getting you know you've made it yeah. getting to the way of counts right when when you can type in liberland and google will zoom you to the seven square kilometers between you know the area between croatia and serbia it, it's like it's a real place google, google knows if google knows it's a real place it's a real place <laughs> on, on, on the planet yeah absolutely yeah. yeah well so it's interesting you know from what i understand they tried to uh marriage ideas of you know limited government with the the anarchists right and trying to kind of create this bizarre um not a frankenstein but this kind of bizarre hybrid between these two very strong independent strains of libertarian thought and you know in my eyes and in some other and some other libertarians eyes that's kind of like trying to square the circle it's kind of like it's, it's like an, trying to have your cake and eat it too it's kind of like an anarchist community that's got this veil of minarchism that they're just showing off to everyone else <laughs> oh yeah we're called liberal and we're totally legit but they're just you know being anarchists like i'm not there so i don't really know how they're living right but well, that's how i'd like to imagine i don't know if there's anybody there yeah i think it's pretty much uninhabited it's yeah mine. there's and, like there's not really anything there. so do you think if they get any serious population like when when some government roll in with tanks at that point uh, you know maybe maybe not i mean it depends on how well they're that's known. how most of these on, end up right from, from the way i can tell from it it's basically because what croatia just got into the, the european union yeah do they, they don't want to really, do, do they really want to put uh you know a uh 
their military right on the border of Serbia just to take over like a seven little square mile like area right next to Serbia. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And Serbia doesn't want to like put their military right next to Croatia. So it's pretty much it's, like they don't they don't want to touch it. It's playing off really well. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's playing off of their off of their mutual like incentives not to like scare each other and you know they're I think I don't know about Serbia but Croatia is pretty new to the EU. So they're not, so they're not looking to they rock the rock, boat. Yeah, and they they're trying to boat. put their best foot forward. I guess. So yeah, Liberal Liberland is kind of like hiding in the shadows of these two giants. Well, yeah, it's a public relations nightmare. Um, and I've thought about this as well with regards to let's say that New Hampshire succeeds, right? Yeah. Or Arcadia, it, it, Arcadia, whatever succeed. New Hampshire succeeds. will secede from the union. Sure. Right. Um, so let's say sure. Yes, absolutely. No, will. absolutely. Right. It's we going, will. It's going to happen. Right. Yes, it's going to happen. But what's interesting is to think about how will the federal government react. Right, and and it's kind of like, kind of like a, a binary choice almost. Either either they choose to like take over and occupy and like quash the rebellion or whatever, or they just kind of let it go. Yeah, and kind of let it live. Right. Yeah. And there's problems with both takes because if they do nothing and they just let it live, then there's this like growing, you know, you know, swelling body of people that are resisting, you know, taxes and avoiding regulations, and it's just kind of. A- anarchy, blowback kind of either an way. Anarchy fungus that kind of grows and they can't stop it. And it's yeah. attracting people, or they give it the, um, or they give it the uh, the weed killer. What do you call that? That was the um, uh, Roundup. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they give it they help with a healthy dose of this GMO Roundup, and they try to try to do their best to kill it. But then it looks it looks horrible. How do you justify spin? How can you spin that in the sense of like? You just went in with tanks and slaughtered these people who were very, very recently U.S. citizens, like right. like white people, and, Anglo-Saxon, and we're not just know, a bunch English. of randos here in New Hampshire. We have family outside of the state, right? And, and most friends, and most people here in New Hampshire, like I would say, I think it's something like thirty or forty percent or something like that. You know, there's a large immigration over population. over fifty percent transplants. Yeah, they're transplants. Yeah. Most of them from Mass, but not all of them. You know, a lot of not just free stayers, but just normal people moving here for job opportunities. But they all have family around. New Hampshire is awesome, and everyone listening should move too. Absolutely. Get your ass in the Shire, people. One segment to go. We haven't even talked about... Uh, us being undercover back in the day. Yeah. We should talk about that last segment. Let's, let's talk about GameStop. We don't mention... Oh. <sighs> See, that's something I would cut from this. Well, we went I don't to, like telling about what jobs I've worked. Well, we didn't. I mean, we went to GameStop first, This is to then, live mic. After, no, I understand, right. But after we went to GameStop, what important. Yes, where I am now, I don't talk about the job that I'm at now. Yeah. Do you have a ladder? A ladder? A lighter. In the in the drawer right next to the stove, pull that out. There should be a lighter in there. Just don't take what uh, whatever else that may be in there. Right. Just grab the lighter. Cause there, there's stuff in there. I haven't heard our commercial yet on this feed. Yeah. We need another commercial. I know we need a better commercial. Yeah. I believe in you. When once the season finale is in here. Once the shy season Once the shy season finale, season finale we, we guys have more time. I have a question. Yeah. Shoot. What would you if you had a um if you had a choice or if you could rank what if you had a choice or if you could rank what would you 
like to hear most from me if I were to speak at Porkfest? What what topics would you think are most interesting or that I would that I can cover that you want to like? You going into something philosophical about how like how we did it earlier in one segment about living free and stuff like that. Talk about something like that. I'd like to hear some philosophy. Yeah, yeah. you're good. You're you're good talking about Bitcoin's philosophy. Great, but it's, it's tired. <laughs> yeah, it's been done. Yeah. You talking about f- the philosophy of being free and stuff like that. You have a way of words talking about it. I'm mean, sure you can tie in Bitcoin, but yeah, something. Uh, yeah. Okay. And while you're at it, get get a website going. <laughs> yeah. Google him. Look at that. You should Google him. I think we're coming back. Your own micro radio station. Or just use TuneIn and do in, like use Bluetooth in your car. I want to make a micro radio station. A micro? Mm, I don't know if I want the uh, the heat. The heat. I'd I'd shut it off the second they gave me the first notice. But I'd get you know for a while you'd be live in Manchester. That's true. We should still do uh, public access. I think you should do it in a vehicle. Can just drive I know. Around. We've been talking about that, that for a long time. That sounds time. like oh, that's an episode of uh, God, that was an episode of something. Oh, um, Malcolm in the Middle, the dad. Uh, he's got a radio station in a car. Yeah, there's an episode where he's driving around in a van doing like a pirate radio station. That's, that's beautiful. That's awesome. where I remember that. And then he became a meth dealer. Yes. <laughs> Gateway drug, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show and uh, MVG. We uh, we tried to go back to our old job because we used to work together. Right? Yeah. They weren't there. The people we want to talk to. Yeah, we tried to reveal ourselves. We were gonna, we were gonna, you know, <laughs> take off the mask. Yes, right. Because we had to work undercover. Yeah, in a very, you know, in a very kind of serious ideological way. Yeah, it's basically. Long story short, like most people, when they, um, a lot of times when people work here in the Shire, um, free staters. Yeah, free staters. You don't come out as a free stater uh, just because you don't, you don't, you don't want to rock the boat. You want them to get to know you as you. You know, you don't want right. to come out as like, yeah, I moved here because I believe in freedom and anarchy and blah, blah, blah. And I want to overthrow <laughs> the, you know, I'm here to like get rid of the, st- of the government, of the state, blah, 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 blah. You don't, you don't come out. You don't come out a full <laughs> anarchy. I moved across the country for my radical political ideology. Yeah. Yeah. That's not something <laughs> you really go with, you know? So um, I remember I hired you there. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> without an interview, without an interview, I'm like, I need someone to work there. I remember right. Um, I actually, you're not the first uh, free stater I hired. Um, before I got to that location, when I was working up in Guilford, I actually hired two free staters, both of which got fired, which really pissed me off. Wow. Yeah, I I don't really talk to either one of them anymore. I was really, it, they're basically free staters that live up near the Lakes region and whatnot. Yeah. Very upsetting because both of them were pretty much didn't they sold my name within the company because they literally like I vouched for them because I figured they're people in the community and they did a horrible job. They were horrible. But anyways, even here, though, well, you did great. But um, well, it was, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> but it was funny. You know, we were kind of like doing a, uh, like a multiplayer co-op type of thing, you know, where like we're undercover. We're, <laughs> you know, I remember there was a moment where uh, uh, both of us and the rest of, of the team there and like, you know, the the di- the new district manager comes in. You just got hired, and right. it's like I like I was dressed better than anyone. Uh, well, you may not have been dressed better than me, very closely, <laughs> but not by much. We we right right. You know, we, we classed up the we joint. classed up the joint way above the bar than what that place had. You yeah, know? I agree. Right, right. And like we were dressed like we were we were the district managers. You know, <laughs> right. and we're we're better dressed than the D, the DM. And it was fascinating because. Um, I remember the whole time I'm thinking, like, well, he's talking to you. So like, you're new here and you don't know anyone. And I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I know who he is. You know? <laughs> it's like, and I can't talk. Like, I remember like we would have conversations in private at work 
like we knew when no one else was listening, we would we would talk to us talk to each other as if like we were having a conversation now. Right. You know, but the moment someone else comes in or we're in front of someone, you know, we're not really so, having those I'd, conversations. I could be like very stiff and like very like unfamiliar with you or with them and yeah. like pretend I was new. Well, I mean, I was new, but I had to pretend like I was unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, we tried our hardest like not to um, uh, blow our cover. <laughs> one time you're like, you're freaking like, they're going to figure it out. They're going to like, you know, how are we going to explain this? Right. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, like how are, they, how are we going to explain that we know each other? This comes out. And I was like, well, I already said, like, I met you at, you know, I'll just say I met you at a Bitcoin meetup because, you know, I, I believe we actually did meet up at a Bitcoin meetup. That's how we first met. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, I, I think it might have been. You guys been. talk about Bitcoin at work? Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 That's part of our activism. His car know? says Bitcoin on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of hard it's, to avoid. It's hard point. to avoid. Yeah. So it comes up in conversation. I need to have a go to. They figure out what my car looks like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. Um, and, you know, we kind of expected to go there and, you know, explain, right? Like walk in the two of us. You know, these people haven't seen us in what, six, six months. Six, seven months. Yeah, it's in six right. months. They to them the we may as well have fallen off the edge of the earth. Right? <laughs> yeah. They have no contact or anything whatsoever. You know, we were hoping to walk in, say hi, kind of look at their like shocked faces at seeing us again, and basically just reveal the situation. Like you guys got taken in. We were actually <laughs> radical anarchists that <laughs> knew each other long before this job and and you're the only the only reason why i hired you because i know you yeah you know, right I didn't, I didn't do an interview yeah. there was no interview process right you know yeah, right, right. <laughs> but turns out they weren't even there i know there was the manager that replaced rob yeah wow <laughs> so that was awkward but i ended up buying 20 dollars worth of nonsense you know i have to admit i don't miss that place at all yeah right oh neither, neither do i that was like a it was an eye opener. Like my life is so much better. It, since it I was like that a job. tall glass of like reality check. Lukewarm, 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 bad tasting water. Yeah, it was like, oh, I remember this. Oh my god, it was horrible. Like it was. I'm so glad I left that place. It was like a bad time in my life. I'm, I'm glad it's in my <laughs> left, past. Left that place. Was made to leave that place. Ah, uh, the day I quit, it's been. It, it's been. I'm not just coming kind of forced out as as it was when I was there, but like. Uh, I actually remember I quit that job. I quit that job in an email when I was out in Keene during the pumpkin festival. I was like sitting at the CAC and I emailed my boss like, I quit. <laughs> I was freaking out the whole day too because I, I didn't have a job lined up. I right. didn't have anything right. lined up whatsoever. Right. And literally three days later, I got hired at, on the spot at my new job for more money. Like, yeah. It, like had karma. To... Like, it's like every time I like make a huge life decision. Like it's just it, like fortune like favors the bold and it yeah. just kept going forward. Like it, it did it when I moved here, you know, it did it when I like decided like to be who I want to be. Like, I'm talking about li living free and living, being who you want to be. I started really embracing that when I got here. Right. And that's been great for me. And then like that, like, like I, I don't need this. I'll find something else, you know, not knowing what it could be. You found a drug test is what you found. Oh yeah. Yeah. I found a drug test and I passed it with flying colors. Thank you very yeah. much. Well, there, thanks to some kind of, Miracle detox, some kind of a soup. I, I have no idea what like you're a... uh, you're speaking of, sir. I passed <laughs> that with flying colors. <laughs> I have are, no idea what you we, are referring to. Remember, we are pro coffee, pro pot, and pro gun on this show. Does it mean I adjust pot? You know, I say I do. <laughs> <laughs> Out with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was fascinating to like go back and like experience all that. You know, we didn't even get. We didn't even talk about what's going down in Baltimore today on this show. Not that I'm kind of glad because I feel like Free Talk Live. Yeah, Free Talk Live covered like, the it, entire like, show the on entire that show. Well, well, one thing I kind of well, we only well, we really have time to go over it because I want to talk about how uh, I don't really think gangs are technically a bad <laughs> thing, but we don't really have time to even. One thing I do want to mention before the show's over is the Scanner Radio app. It's going crazy. If you don't have this app, it's just called Scanner Radio. With, like this little like orange kind of uh, logo. And um, it's been telling me that there are over 15,000 people listening to the Baltimore PD uh, police scanner. Wow. Which is insane. It's, it's been blowing up, and it, the number just keeps going up and up. And uh, I think we should definitely have as many ears as possible listening in on what the cops are doing. Watch the watchers. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, you know. I need to get down on my phone to just listen to Manch PD. Yeah, I've you know. listened to Match PD before. Actually, uh, what, what do you have like a, a setting where you can where it notifies you and there's a lot of people listening? In? Yes, you can. You can set the number to. I have it. If there's like over like a hundred people in Manchester, I get a notification. That's a lot. It uh, it happens every now and then. You know, sometimes like weekends and stuff. Well, I mean that's good to know because unfortunately, Manch sometimes Match PD like to be 
active, you know. Right, like today they're out in full force. Oh my god, they're out in full force. It had to be because of Baltimore. Like they're they're showing their their military force. It felt like it, it felt like this, like every single cop car was out on on patrol today. Yeah, it, and I mean they even had people on horseback for guys. Like it was just way too many people out there. You know? I just drove down to Chipotle today and I I passed by at least five cops. Yeah, I I I I was followed twice and I passed about five cars. That's literally just going from here to the other side of the Merrimack and back, which is like a five minute trip. Right. It was intense. Like the amount of people in there. And I actually was talking to a couple of locals like going shopping. Like, what's with this police person? Like, I don't know, it's fucking horrible. You know, and it is. Right. No one likes that. No one likes that feeling that you get when you see the the cop, you know, driving nearby. Yeah, what do you feel when you see the you know, when you look in your rear view and you see red and blue lights and you see, do you feel, you know, it's warm and fuzzy, right? <laughs> Cause that's no, no. I mean, am I the only? No, I, or you like the rest of the human race? Intense fear feels intense, instinctive fear. Yeah, I don't see this fear. I just, I just get mad. I just get pissed. Oh, off. you're beyond I'm the fear. Not, I'm, not, I'm beyond the fear. Oh, I've been, still, I've I've been pulled over so many times in this state. That's true. You know, I'm a cop magnet. I've gotten to the point where I expect it. You know, I have like this Man, like six sense peripheral it. vision of whenever like cops are around. Well, start smoking weed and take a two week cop hiatus. <laughs> A cop hiatus. <laughs> yeah, get your tolerance levels back to normal. <laughs> that will require me not to leave this building and not uh, drive. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not either of the case because I like getting out and about. So we're coming up to the end. Uh, Mateus, where can everyone find you at? I live on the internet. So if you've heard about it, it's a great new place to, to meet people. I love the internet. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's a good time. I recommend connecting with me on Facebook. You can connect with me on Instagram. You can connect with me on Google. Uh, you can connect with me on Tumblr, if you know my secret identity. You Ooh. can connect with me on some other different, uh, some other different sites. Um, I've are got, write, one, are I've got writing one, scattered throughout. Are you the one on, t- on Tumblr reposting my photos? <laughs> Could be. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> I'll never tell. Where else can they find you? You can find me on Google. Just search. You'll find my writings scattered about some of my thoughts. Hopefully, literally, some, hopefully someday soon, they'll be able to find a Mateus on Greenberg website to find all your writings. In the work. I hope so. There's a Mateus video right up the front of strategy.com. And they can find you at strategy.com. Absolutely. You can find me at therebel.com. And uh, go like us on Facebook, guys. Peace. Peace.